Oh, hey, buddy. What's the matter? Hmm? Want to say hi? Say hi to our YouTube friends. Hmm? Anyway. This is not a video about windows. <laughs> Just a quick update on the window, basement window project. Um, yes, I'm still waiting for the custom ordered window for the uh, computer room. But I decided in the meantime to go through some of my scrap material and actually finish off the inside of these windows. I used uh, some what they call shoe molding. This is left over from the kitchen floor project and I have some leftover quarter round that I used for the top up there that was um, from the I think it was from the front entryway project last year and uh, that's that so I just decided to make this look a little bit nicer now these moldings are not nailed in place I actually used a construction adhesive and then I painted them these are wood by the way to uh, I painted them with some dry lock paint which is just a very thick like ice cream thick <laughs> um, concrete paint and uh, it's actually latex paint but anyway so that's that I, I did that to you know make these look properly professional and finished and give the basement a little bit of class yeah speaking of Oreo you know, I was going to just about to sit there. And he just jumps in there like, hey, it's my chair now. I tell you what, Oreo, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring out this chair. And you can sit in this chair. Does that sound good? Or are you going to force me out of my own chair? I tell you what. Oh, you got hair all over this one, too. That's okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to transfer you from one chair to the next so I can make a video for our YouTube audience. Here, go ahead. Go ahead, take that. Sh yep, 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 yep. All right, let's try this again. Do the old. There you go. All right. Now you can watch Daddy work. Okay, or not. Whatever you want to do. I forgot I had this laptop. Yes, folks, I've reached a point where I have so much technology crap that I forgot I owned this Lovely HP Compaq. It's got an identity crisis. Look at that. NC8230. This is a corporate style laptop um, that the cats have been using as a bed. Thank you, by the way, for that. Um, so this is a laptop that uh, would be typically sold to a corporation, possibly a... Um, uh, public office, you know, this is not something you're going to find at your local Walmart or Staples. This is actually a decent laptop. Um, this is the only Windows X, well, no, no, I take that back. This is one of two Windows XP era laptops that I own. Um, and did I mention I forgot I owned it? Let's take a look, take a closer look at it. All right, so what we're going to do now is I want to take a look at the laptop as a whole and see what we got going on. So uh, this one has the, um, this is a really nice machine actually for its, for its age. So as you can see, this being a corporate laptop, it has a docking station port on the bottom. And I believe there was a rubber plug on some models that you could stick in there to protect the, uh, the uh, plug. Um, it's got a business card holder with the HP card still in it. Now, if you remember correctly, if, you, if you've been around uh, technology since at least 2005, this logo may look familiar to you. This was HP's corporate look circa mid-2000s. I'm going to take a guess. Now, I don't remember how old this machine was, but... I'm going to guess that it was made somewhere around 05, as late as maybe even 06, or 06, as they often say. Now, one way to determine age, wow, it, security screw installed for shipping can be removed for normal use. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to remove that. This has a, uh, a drive bay, a removable CD-ROM drive. Um, 
Alright, so I found me a screwdriver. Now, one of the ways I like to um, determine, now this isn't necessarily true for modern stuff, but for older equipment, uh, anything with a CD-ROM drive or a mechanical hard drive that happens to be original, uh, you can tell the age simply by pulling out either the CD-ROM drive or the hard drive, because they always have production dates on them, well, almost always. Now, there is no eject button for the CD-ROM drive, it looks like. Or is there? Sometimes these fancier laptops will have, you know, eject buttons. This is a really nice machine, I have to say. The build quality of this laptop is superior to anything they make today. Um, I think the only company that seems to be improving the build quality is Apple. And I know how controversial that is. And, and my statements on my previous statements on Apple equipment have not changed, nor has my stance. Um, but I will say that I've worked on some of Apple's newer products and the overall build quality just seems to be getting better. Ah, there we go. Ha. Let me show you how that works. I figured it out. So there is a, um, a push and release let me see if I can get some light on this thing here. There we go. Push and release. That's how you pull that out. This laptop almost ended up in the boneyard um, when I was doing some cleaning up when I was moving here. And uh, I, it didn't make it to the boneyard um, because I felt it had potential. Um, one of the things about Windows XP era hardware is it's really starting to become collectible. Some of this better quality stuff um, that's built to last is really starting to uh, become collectible. Not as collectible as, say, you know, an Apple II or anything, but um, they are getting to be a little bit on the valuable side. So was I right or was I right? November 2005, so that makes this machine a candidate for being possibly an early 06 machine which is kind of cool. Now this has a DVD, ROM, CD, or W drive, which was Back then, that was the best drive you could get on a laptop. Back then, that was the best kind of drive you could find in a laptop. And I love that solid click. This is a nice, I don't know why I've ignored this machine. You know, here's why. When, I, when this was given to me, um, it was in too good condition for me to throw away. It was, I think I got this machine sometime in 2000, 15, maybe 16, and I, it's just kind of languished ever since. I, It was too clean and too nice to throw away, but I wasn't super excited about owning it because it's really a Windows XP era laptop, which isn't something that I was really interested in saving. But let's take a look inside again. Uh, this thing has um, nice, I just love the styling of this. I gotta say, back in the day, laptops, the the more expensive models from manufacture major manufacturers, there was a, a lot of mixed material, mixed mixed texturing, mixed colors and materials. Nowadays, laptops are built so cheaply. Oh wow! Check this out. Okay, we can remove the keyboard by unlock unlocking these three little levers or these latches. And I bet it just pulls up for easy upgradability. Tell me I'm wrong. It does have a little bit of wear on the rubber uh, track point uh, buttons. Um, so whoever owned this laptop or used it used the track point buttons. I forget how this thing came about. Um, the person who gave it to me, I believe it was given to her by her husband's employer or former employer. And it was just, they just, you know, basically said, you can have it, just get rid of it. Um, and uh, are there screws? Hold on. Are there screws underneath? Yes, there are screws. So let's take those out and take a look at it. I might actually have some memory that might fit in this thing that I can finally put to use. I'm excited. 
I'm so excited about this. I didn't think I would be. I'm like, I don't want to do this video because this is just an old Windows XP machine. But then again, here we are in 2021 where people actually want, people are paying real money for these things, which means that someone might actually watch this video, which is kind of cool. I mean, not everything I do is watchworthy, right? Even I can admit that. So I'm going to take these screws out and take a look under the keyboard and see what we got. I know this laptop works um, because I actually had it running about about a year and a half ago, maybe. It's, you know, really, I'm not even been about a year, I think, since I've actually turned this thing on. And uh, no way, it's got Bluetooth. Holy crap. This must have, I just noticed it's got a Bluetooth logo right here where there would be a Bluetooth antenna. That's crazy. This thing can't possibly have Bluetooth in 2005. This was a nice laptop. Somebody paid real money for this thing. More than likely it was a corporate purchaser. This is like the executive's laptop, I'm telling you. So. And the nice thing about this laptop is because it's such a nice machine, chances are I might still be able to find drivers for this. But it is kind of a piece of history in its own right. It was made when Compaq still owned the H, or still used, I'm sorry, let me, let, me, let me start over. When HP was still using the Compaq name, I believe by within a couple of years of this, they had completely dropped the Compaq name from every, yeah. So, removing the keyboard, what do we got? Um, memory slot is accessible underneath this heatsink. Um, it looks like it's got some crucial memory in there. Um, I can't see the size, but 128 MX60, so it could be a couple of 128s. Looks like there's at least one in there. We'll see how much RAM is in this in a bit. The fan is clean, no real dust buildup. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, there's no real dust build up there. Let's see. Real time clock battery. We can rebuild that. That'd be it's an easy one right there. It actually kind of looks like one I might have put together. I think it is. Have I been ah oh, wait a minute. I think it's possible that I might have actually put a battery in this machine. It looks like my handiwork. Oh yeah, uh, without a doubt. I've made videos on this laptop before, at least one or two, and this is my work. I know this is, I know I did this. Now that it's starting to come back to me, I think I, I, think I actually put a, put a battery in this. So um, that would have been a long time ago. May need a new one again. So yeah, I've been in this laptop before. So why don't we title this video, Revisiting the Compaq NC8230. But now I have a new appreciation for it because it survived the, um, it survived all this time. And we're gonna play with it. What I wanna do, I have about three copies of Grand Theft Auto. And I wanna see if it'll run on this machine. I think it will. Um, it all depends on what kind of graphics adapter this thing has because Grand Theft Auto, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 is fairly sensitive to the graphics adapters that you use. Um, let me tell you a story. I, I, it's story time. Yeah, why not? Why not make the most out of this time that we have together? And, um, and while my girlfriend is out house-sitting, I've got the house to myself so I can talk loudly on camera without disturbing her. Um, Back in 04, I had custom ordered a brand new H. See, I, all right, so I, I finally was starting to make real money. And I put some money aside. So in 04, I was, uh, what I was, I was what, 18? No, in 04, I was 20. What am I thinking? In 04, I was 20 years old, and I had started making a little bit of money, you know, at my job. 
So I decided I'm gonna spend a little bit of money on a nice laptop. I had never owned a new laptop before, and I figured, you know what, what the hell? Let's, uh, let's treat myself to something decent. So what I did is I uh, went ahead and I went to HP's website. I decided I'm not gonna buy something from Best Buy or something in store. I'm gonna buy something custom because I wanted a floppy drive and none of the laptops that they were selling in the stores had floppy drives. So I go to HP's website and I went ahead and built an HP Pavilion ZE5700 with a floppy drive, a CDRW drive. There was no DVD option on that model, so I bought a CDRW. Maybe there was a DVD. Maybe, no, I think it had a DVD in it. Yes, it did. <coughs> so I bought the, the upgraded uh, drive with DVD functionality. I was, I was so, so, like, thrilled that I was going to finally have a nice laptop. So, so then... When it came time to picking out the CPU from the custom laptop build selector thing, I decided because I had already had a uh, I had a a uh, Celeron desktop at the time. I had a what did I have? I had a um, I had an eMachines desktop with a Celeron processor in it, and I was happy with it. It was a decent desktop. So I went and I ordered this machine, floppy drive and all internal floppy drive it wasn't an external and it shows up at the house about a week or two later I think it was longer than that because it took a while to, to get the customs in and i turn it on and i start playing around with it and i and i'm like this thing is really slow like what what on earth this thing is really bad and i and i just and then i looked at the spec like i not that i didn't look before but I looked at the, um, the system specs again, and then it hit me. The Celeron processor, for whatever reason, had a 100 megahertz front side bus. That was it. That's all you got. 100 megahertz front side bus. And the Pentium, if I had sprung for the, the Pentium 4 266, it would have had a 133 Megahertz. I think it was 133 megahertz front side bus on the Pentium 166. So I said, you know what? I am not keeping this laptop. I packaged it right back up. See, I was playing, what I was doing is I was playing um, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 on the laptop as my test. Because I knew that, you know, if it can't play Grand Theft Auto, then it's dead. It's useless to me. That was the only game I ever really liked. And so I'm like, this thing, it just isn't doing it for me. Um, so I called HP. They said, oh, we'll take it back. No problem. And, uh, and that was that. So I, I reordered the exact same laptop in 2004 with a Pentium 4 266. This would have been the summer of 04. That laptop arrived, and I used it for five years I think I upgraded the RAM to a gigabyte, which was, I think, the max. I ordered it initially with 512, and then I upgraded it later on. Um, that laptop served me very well. I never had a problem with it. I never had a problem. That was a great machine. I'm trying to clean this little nubbin thing here. We'll have to pop this off if I can. Yeah, it's really disgusting. Let me take a look. Let's get a closer, closer peek at it. I have to, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to watch the video I made of this laptop a little bit ago and see, see what I, what I said about it back then. I think that was a few years ago. Anyway, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm going to try to find a pick. And we're going to pick this, we're going to clean this. It just so happens that I've been moonlighting as a dentist. <laughs> anyway... So that laptop was, it was worth what I paid for it for sure. I paid, um, I remember what I paid too. I think it was a f about $1,400 for the Pentium 4 uh, 166. And um, yeah, I love that machine. It, it really worked. It served me, served me well 
for the time I owned it. <laughs> and um, I'm glad I sprang for the Pentium 4 because at least I got to experience the difference between the Pentium 4 and the Celeron. If I recall, I actually kept the I kept the Celeron for a little while before sending it back. Um, because I wanted to compare the two uh, side by side. Never thought to run any benchmark software on it though. But yeah, that was that was my first brand new. Uh, that was actually my first brand new computer. No, no, that was my first brand new laptop, as a matter of fact. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So what we're going to do is, we, because I don't have a replacement nub, I'm just using this pick to get in between the little nubs within the nub. Or I just like using the word nub. I don't know. I got some compressed air. Is that in here? Yeah, it's right here. I'll just... Oops. So that's starting to clean up nice. It's just packed with God only knows what. Mold? I don't know. I don't want to know. Sometimes you just don't want to know. I'm thinking it's actually food crumbs and other residue. This was certainly a work laptop. Somebody definitely... Uh, got their purchasing manager to to shell out the big bucks and bought them the ultimate luxury laptop of 2005 hell of 2006 and I think back 2006 is the year I started working at my current job like what the hell What the hell? Where has time gone? 2006, I was just a young kid, 22, looking to start a career in IT, and I got stuck. <laughs> I say I got stuck. Actually, I love my job. I love my employer. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be there today. And if they didn't like me, they wouldn't have kept me as long as they have. I think I'm starting my 16th year at the same place and you know what it just works sometimes you find a you find a job that you just you know what I could do this until I die kind of thing um, that was more common in the old days like you know up until like the 1980s maybe and then as time goes on you know um, companies and employees they no longer have much loyalty to each other and they're always looking for a better opportunity or a cheaper employee. Either way, better pay or cheaper <laughs> cheaper workforce. Anyways, enough of that. So, we clean the nubs within the nub. Battery's dead, or not naturally. Battery's dead. It's got an old lithium ion pack. I might even rebuild the battery. I mean, what the hell, right? You only live once. YOLO. So this machine is is 15 years old actually going on 16 and uh let's see what she's got now i just want to emphasize just how well decked out this thing is let's take another look at what it has for uh, yeah now he puts a protector on the i don't want to scratch it up so much let's take a quick look a gander if you shall at what it's got for portage um so you got your vga which is typical there's your power on the back remember when ports are on the back this is the generation where they started changing that over. You'll notice the uh, battery takes up the rear of the machine. In prior generations, the battery would have been somewhere in this vicinity. But in this one, the battery is way here in the back. Um, this is kind of a... An, when, when they really started to push ports to the sides, which I hate, and I think most of you would agree with me on this. You've got a memory card reader, SD... SC, what was an SC card? I forget. SC. So there's your SD card, but your SC. And then you've got your PCM CIA. Yeah, it's a standard PCM CIA slot. God, it even has that. I think no, my HP had the my HP had I think it had one slot. One slot. 
Uh, you've got your Firewire 400. No, is that that's Firewire? It could be Firewire 800. I think it's 800 or Mini 400. You've got your USB. Could be US. This is probably USB 2. It's got a modem. Holy crap! It's a modem and an Ethernet jack and your Kensington lock. On this side, we got some fun stuff. It has a you know what? This machine is something because this is the perfect bridge machine. If you've got vintage hardware, this will accept. This will work with anything. You, you've got, you've got, wow, RS232C. You've got two more USB 2.0s, microphone, headphone. Um, so this laptop does it all. And Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So this is the last of a of an era my friends this is the this is it this is cool i'm really excited about this machine and it's just been sitting on my basement floor for three years it's just been sitting here and i've ignored it like it was leftover potatoes i don't know first thing that came to my mind guys i'm gonna do a good clean up clean up on aisle three whoa almost dropped it uh, let's take a look at what it's got for a hard drive. Oh, 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 no way. It has IRGA. It's got infrared. This is, holy, I forgot how great laptops used to be. This is a, this is cool, my friends. This is cool. Or I'm really overhyping it just for posterity's sake. Um, but it has a little reverse divot right above the Wi-Fi antenna signal line nightmare. Oh, remember LEDs, guys? <laughs> remember LEDs? Remember when your laptop told you that it was either on, off, sleeping, connected to Wi-Fi, hard drive activity? Folks, it's got all of these things. Um, I think this one's your charge indicator, there's your power sleep indicator, your Wi-Fi connectivity, and your hard drive activity. I mean, that's just... Oh, no. It's got... <laughs> it's got S-Video. This thing is the bee's knees. Man, I can't wait to see if it runs. I know it runs. Let's do it. Let's power it up. Hook up power. I cannot believe I almost threw this thing. I really seriously almost got rid of this thing. Okay, I got signs of life. It's got, yeah, it's got an old, fa here, let's turn this off. Time and date not set. All right, so our clock batteries toast. Um, it has um, an old-fashioned fluorescent backlight, so it's really dim. I don't care that the time and date is not set. I think I should have tested it before I wasted all that energy trying to fix it. All right, let's shut it off. Turn it back on again. Yeah, so our clock battery is dead. Let's just see what it does. Here we go. Time and date not set, I know. There it goes. Windows XP! Ah, I haven't seen that logo in a long time. And see how it's blue? The, the, uh, the bar here is blue. That usually means it's XP Pro. But I think Service Pack 3 made them all blue anyway. I'm not gonna bother rebuilding this machine. If I recall, it still had a factory HP build in it. So I'm not going to, yeah, it's got the HP logo. Date and time is invalid, no shit. All right. Although the time is surprisingly correct. It was 10.38, okay, so it's not correct, all right. But it does come up at 11 p.m. It's got Win DVD installed. Yes, I want it to be the default, thank you very much. It's telling me that antivirus software is non-existent. I wonder if this will connect to my modern day wireless. I don't think it will, but we'll try it anyway. Let's see. Refresh network list, please. 
It'll at least find it. But I think wireless is turned off. So we're gonna have to turn wireless on. Remember when laptops had a button on the keyboard that you would press that would turn the wireless radio on and off? Guess what's got it? This guy. So now it should show me. Let's see what we got. I just can't believe it has Bluetooth. Bluetooth in 2005, you've got to understand, that was not common. Um, I'm gonna connect it to my, I have a stripped down older wireless access point. So I'm just connect, I'm connecting it to my, um, to my cheap, uh, cheapest, my, my lower end unsecure wireless access point. Let's see if she connects. Connected! Cool. All right. Internet Explorer, what is this? Internet Explorer 7? Yeah, that's not gonna work. Let's see if we can get to Google. No, security certificate. Continue to website. Oh, yes. We got the Googles. But there won't be, uh, let's see. Um, web browser for Windows X pain in the ass. Let's see. No, I don't want autocomplete. Let's see what we got here. Retrobrowsers.com. I don't know if that's legit or not. Brightness. Let's turn the brightness up. Maybe as high as it'll go. Yeah. Remember, so these old-fashioned fluorescent backlights were never as bright as modern-day screens, and they would have to warm up for a while. What I noticed is there's another brightness control on this machine that... Oh, ambient light sensor. Okay, I knew there was an ALS on this. So it's right here. I was wondering what this was for. This is an ambient light sensor. So I just was able to turn the ambient light sensor off, which automatically adjusts the brightness based on the room brightness. So if I turn this light on here, the screen automatically lights up brighter. Turn it off and it dims. That was a fairly new thing at the time. And I believe Apple was one of the first ones to do it. Um, Where's my cursor? I'm gonna try the track point. Oh yeah. Remember track points. I'm getting all ads here. I'll just have to download it from a, a newer machine and stick it in with a USB. But display blocked content. Yeah, these are all ads. But it still works, right? All of these are ads. Pale Moon, Opera, Firefox. All of these are ads. Anyway, because the browsers for older OSs change all the time as to what is good, what is not, I'm not, I'm not aware or up on that right now. Um, so forgive me for that one. Now, the question I have is what, all right, so let's take a look at the hardware specs on this guy. Registered to user. It's got a Pentium M 1.86, two gigabytes of RAM. We are running service pack three. All right, so that's, that's actually quite good. All right, and it looks to be a clean build. I didn't see, last time I was in here, it didn't have a lot of crap in it. And I think I did install Office 2000. Let's take a look. Microsoft Word 2000. So I did, I, I think I may have actually, no, I don't want to register. Are you kidding me? Um, I believe I installed this uh, on this laptop. That was like the only thing I did to it. I cleaned it up a little bit and I installed Office. Well, I'm excited, aren't you? Let's, uh, let's see if it'll, um, let's see if we can get, uh, Duke, not Duke Newcomb. Let's try to get one of my many copies of Grand Theft Auto on here. 
I also have the Sims Deluxe Edition. Is that for Windows or Mac? I think it's for Mac. PC. All right. Cool. The complete collection for Mac. Damn it. Well, at least I have the Ultimate Edition. That's better than nothing, right? Grand Theft Auto 3. There we go. Is there a CD in here? Nope. It's an empty box. Come on. Okay, I have some bad news. Um, turns out my Grand Theft Auto software is completely MIA. I don't know where it is. I have a box. And I don't have a game. That is depressing. Um, it's probably here somewhere. I think I had it out for something, but it's a worthless box with a license code. So, well, I'll hang on to that for now. Um, I know you can hear the the unfortunate. Uh, yeah, bad, 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 bad. Okay, what I have here is the Sims complete collection for PC on hacked CDRs. Um, I've actually used this before. It is a bit finicky though. It may or may not work, but we're going to try it. Um, this is a CD-less uh, run, hacked version. Um, and I, you know what? I own, legitimately own, like three copies of this already. This is more of a convenience thing for me. Um, it's the Sims 8-in-1 DVD image that I spread across three CDs. And uh, it's kind of nice because you can run the entire game with all options without a, without a CD in the drive. That's why I have it. Let's see if it runs. I, um, I've only used it on Windows 2000, so let's see what happens. Until then, I think... I've got to find my uh, a copy of Grand Theft Auto, which is a legit copy, by the way. It's not uh, not hacked or anything. I just don't know where the hell it is. But yeah, yeah. I've actually bought this software twice. The Sims Complete. The first time the DVD went bad, and the second time I switched platforms. So I got two Mac versions and. No PC version. But anyway, they got their money out of me. Plus the original Sims that I paid good money for. I used to like the Sims. Version 1.0 only. I never liked I never liked the newer ones. Uh, Sims 2, Sims 3. Never got into them. It was it was Sims 1 that I liked. But enough of that. What do we have for a hard drive? I think that's uh, the question that you're all wondering about. And um let me tell you, I don't have any plans of buying a conversion for this. Total size is 60 gig drive, um, so that's that's not great. I have much bigger drives I could put in this, like mechanical drives, but yeah, sure it would be a good candidate for a solid state conversion. I I can agree with you there. Any other questions, comments? Uh, leave them in the chat box. Or chat box. Leave them in the um, in the comments. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to hang on to this machine, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do specifically. Again, it's it's got Bluetooth. Like, it it, it has Bluetooth. Like, why? Does uh, I mean that's that's just crazy. Bluetooth on a 2005 business laptop, no less. It must have been used for like a, a wireless earpiece or something like that. Um, because they know, you know they weren't syncing contacts with their smartphone. If they were, it was over a cable. So, uh, that's just how they rolled back then in 05. Are we going to call this an 06 or an 05? The CD drive was made in November of 05. So, this could have been an early fiscal year 2006 purchase at the old, the old uh, uh, widget factory corporate uh, headquarters of the widget factory where they have money to burn because of the sale of widgets was just fantastic. Notice something absent though. Do you, have you noticed this yet? Any of you younger viewers? What is missing from this laptop? 
Can you tell me what's missing? Okay. Well, tell you what's missing. No camera. There was no camera on this machine. Cameras were not a necessity in 05. Yes, we had broadband. Yes, you could do web conferencing, but it was it was terrible. The cameras that laptops did have on the ones that actually had cameras, which some of them did in 05, uh, the cameras that they were including were VGA resolution at best, if not less than that. They were grainy and pixelated and just nasty. Um, so it was kind of a waste of money to put a camera in a laptop. If you wanted a webcam, you would use an external USB clip-on, like this one over here that I have not in within arm's reach of me right now. But I have one, I swear to God, that just hangs on the back of the screen, and that's what you would use for web conferencing, if you were doing web conferencing. Another thing I want to point out that you might not have really clicked on yet, <laughs> I, I use that ironically, the trackpad. So. Take a good look at this trackpad. You'll notice that these vertical bars are here. So this was before the days of two-finger scrolling. If you wanted to scroll, you had to use this dedicated portion of the trackpad. Now, on a on normal... Yeah, so if I put my finger on this part of the trackpad, watch what happens. Look at that. It brings up a scroll bar. So I'll show you what, how that works. I'm going to open up my computer, open up um, local disk C. I'm going to open up, uh, let's go to Windows. Not something I can scroll through. Yes, I want to see the code. Okay. So, two-finger scrolling doesn't do anything. They didn't have the gestures in 2005. No, you had to put your finger over here. And if the moons and stars aligned, you would be able to scroll. <laughs> There we go. There you go. That's how you scrolled in 2005. Which means, by the way, that the only part of the trackpad... I feel like if you've ever watched um, The Jerk, starring um, Steve Martin, he's working at a carnival. And there's a big shelf of prizes on the wall. A big shelf of prizes. And... He's explaining to the contestants of the ring toss game that he, he's uh, hosting over there at the carnival. says, you can win any prize you want as long as it's between, like, and he, and he, only, and he points out, like, maybe, like, five prizes on the whole shelf. So you can pick out any prize on the shelf that you want. Okay? You can pick our, well, anything except this and anything on this shelf, right? Um, you can't get anything over here. These are off limits, but anything between anything you can you can win this Basically is what it comes down to Classic movie by the way if you haven't seen the jerk So if you look at this trackpad on this beautiful HP compact identity crisis machine You can use the whole trackpad as long as it's between here and here and here Look at this is it. This is all the trackpad you get <laughs> I forgot how absurd that was. And there's six buttons to choose from. Why six? Let me show you. Depending on how the trackpad is mapped, that middle button could sometimes be used for scrolling. Um, this one is mapped. This is your left, your right click, your left click. And this was a big deal, by the way. Now, some trackpads back then even had a side scroll section. So you would get all this itty bitty space, and then up here or down here, there'd be a side scrolling section. I... Were trackpads at a premium then? I, I don't know. But I think most people would have used the track point at this point. Because a lot of the, you gotta think, the corporate laptop users of, of America or the world in 2004, 2005, 06, more than likely had experience with earlier laptops which had AccuPoints or track points or whatever, whatever the company who sold the device called them because there were different names. I know I get argued 
arguments from people all over the internet over this one. There is, there are many names for this. IBM calls it the track point, if I'm not mistaken. I think Compaq called it the AccuPoint. But anyway, let's talk about features that were carried over from Compaq. Um, this was something Compaq used extensively in the LTE line uh, for a number of years. Um, and the and the uh, the uh, Armada line as well, which they inherited from, I believe, Toshiba and IBM, or they you know, borrowed the technology. AST, by the way, another laptop maker from back in the day, also used these track points, um, or whatever their term was for them. Hell if I know. Now, what are these six buttons for? Well, I believe the middle button. No, it's not. Okay. Um, depending on who made the laptop and who mapped the keys, the middle button is sometimes used to enable scrolling on the track point. That is not the case here. Let's take a look at our mouse um, control panel and see if we can remap that button to something. Because I really, I genuinely don't know. Um, this button is heavily worn, but we're going to leave it alone. That's, that adds character to it, I think. I'm just going to say that to make me happy. Let's go to mice, mouse, mouses, mouse. You can double tap, by the way. That was a thing. That's been a thing, by the way, for many years. Right, let's see what we have for options. Okay. Hardware, device, settings, buttons. It's set up as a two-button mouse. The third button does nothing. Okay pointing stick. So they're calling it a pointing stick here. Uh, <laughs> synaptic, sim, synaptic, I can't say it. Synaptics touchpad version 6.2. Uh, let's see. Oh, device settings. Let's see. Uh, enabled, yes. You can disable either the trackpad or the pointing stick from the control panel here. Let's see. Now, there is an option for scrolling wheel. That is what this guy does. This little one-eighth of a trackpad is for the scroll. You can change the wheel, the, the scrolling distance, if you will, mileage with that button there. Yeah, there are no options here for the third button. And that's what you get in 2005. I'm sure it does something. It does something. The question is what? I don't know what it does, honestly. I'm sure somebody will be able to, because I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I never actually owned a laptop with three buttons. Never owned one, not once, never happened. Just wasn't in my car, in my, uh, my, in my tarot cards. So I am not. I am bewildered as to what this. I've seen three button mice before, and the third button is used for specialty applications. But I never really knew what those were. At least I'm honest with my viewers. <laughs> you know. Oh look, the mute button lights up. In orange. I just. Look, I'm going to tell you all the things that this laptop has that I miss. Number one, status lights. Status lights for a, for a computer user, especially an older one like myself. I mean, I can, I've been using computers since 1990. So status lights are key. I, I really miss status indicators because it tells you what's with, at a glance, I know my my caps lock is on. I know my num lock is on, which laptops have, except Apple's, PC laptops have num lock buttons because you can actually use, most people don't, you do this, but these, um, these keys here in this region can become number keys for rapid data entry. Um, so if I have the num lock on and I'm trying to type a U and it's typing a four, I can just say, oh, num lock is on. The mute indicator. It's nice to know that your sound is muted and not just turned down all the way. It's, 
It's nice to know that there's disc disc uh, getting late. Disc access is happening. By that little indicator there. I know the battery's charging. I don't know how well, but I know it's charging. Because the battery light indicator tells me so. I know the wireless radio is turned on because the wireless radio icon or, or LED tells me so. If you work on Apple products today, it can be infuriating because you don't know if the machine is on or malfunctioning or off. You don't know because there's no light to tell you what the hell's going on. That is the one thing that frustrates me about Apple. One of the one of the few, many things, there are many things that frustrate me about Apple, but that's one of the big ones because you don't know. I used to use that I, that, that LED, that sleep-wake status LED, to tell me what the state of the machine was in the absence of a functioning display. Just a pet peeve. What the hell does this do? Let's find out. Presentation settings. Ooh, this is how we know it's a business machine. This automatically brings up, I can tell it to start PowerPoint. Oh wow, this is the heavy part of the PowerPoint here. I remember the PowerPoint days when every business meeting included a PowerPoint. They still do sometimes, but this was like a big deal. And they had a button just for presenting things. I can tell it at the touch of a button to open up Microsoft PowerPoint, which I'll demonstrate right now. Apple Disk C program files. Let's see Microsoft. Microsoft Office. Office. I gotta find PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Open. Look at that. Power scheme. Presentation. So I can set my presentation power scheme to never dim the display. Blah, blah, blah. I can say never show this again. So I, what's going to happen is automatically switch to external display. I'm not going to do that. Continue. Apply. And watch this. This is so freaking cool. I bet your Mac doesn't do this. Or my Mac, for that matter. Watch this. Look at that. Touch of a button. PowerPoint. Boom! 2005. It was a time to be alive. No laptop today has a PowerPoint button. I can promise you that. If you find me a laptop that has a PowerPoint button, on the keyboard just for that purpose, I will buy it. Just kidding, I won't buy it, but it'll be cool because that was a thing. Now, the consumer grade HP compact machines, yes, they existed, I'm sure. They usually had about four or five buttons. One of them was to launch uh, Microsoft Outlook Express. One would start Microsoft Internet Explorer. Another one would start, um, or usually at least four. One of them, I think, I can think of email, internet, or the other two. Come on, help me out here. My HP actually had, oh, one of them was for help. It would actually open a help menu. Like, who uses Windows help? If you need Windows help, if, that, if, that, if that's where you are in life, in 2004, and you needed Windows help, and the only way you could get it was through the press of a button on the anyway so that's that's that is how the consumer laptops work this one's got a PowerPoint button how freaking cool is that anyway I'm blown away I wish I could rebuy this laptop today but modernize so that it'll run like Windows 11 I'm just kidding I didn't do that no in all seriousness Windows XP was a great operating system. It introduced a lot of new features to the desktop user. Um, it started out weak. I think people kind of ridiculed it for the Fisher Price interface that it had. I mean, honestly, come on. Um, but I, I know that was one of the biggest criticisms that I had heard uh, from folks that I interacted with on a regular basis. But Windows XP was fairly stable. 
Um, it was modern enough. It could do everything you needed a computer to do in the early to mid 2000s. In fact, Windows XP was so popular and so rely well, I don't want to say it wasn't that secure, but it was fairly stable and it worked with just about everything that Windows XP machines are still in use to this very day. Windows XP has endured so much. Um, I know that where I work, we moved our office users off of XP in around 2010 or so, yeah, about 10 years ago. Um, when Windows 10 stable, actually no, we, we had them running on Windows 7. So I think we, we moved them to Windows 7 in about 2008 or 9. But we used Windows 10, Windows XP until the very bitter end. And my users loved it because it worked. It just did the job. Yes, it was insecure. And yes, we had to do a lot of back-end uh, network security to keep it, you know, from going haywire. But it was a great OS. And it's just funny that now we've reached a point in the, in the computer realm where machines from 1998 are highly collectible and now we're starting to see the budding collectability of Windows XP machines and that's a great thing it really is I never thought these machines would be collectible Look at these guys. Look. The love they have for each other is just incredible. They <laughs> just... Look at that. <laughs> and they'll sit there for an hour, two hours, three hours. They'll fall asleep. I guarantee you I'm going to leave this room tonight and they'll still be there by like three in the morning. And then by five in the morning, this little guy right here, it's gonna wake me up to let him on the porch, which I won't do. I will not do that, Tommy. Oreo used to do it, but he kind of stopped. I don't know why, he just kind of wants to hang out down here. It's nice and cool and dry. They love the basement. They really do because it's in the, in the summer heat, we don't really air condition the house much, but the basement stays cool and dry. I've got the dehumidifier down here. And they just chill down here for almost the entire night, as a matter of fact. It's kind of crazy. In the winter, though, they'll come sleep with us. And, um, oh, at least Oreo will. Tommy, not so much. He's a loner. But, uh, I gotta clean your eyes, buddy. Yeah. You're not doing a good job. But he doesn't let us touch him. Watch this. I'm gonna put my finger up to him. He'll sniff me out. Oh, that's the closest he's ever let me touch him. Hmm. Interesting. Good night. Bud. So, anyway, uh, I didn't finish installing the Sims, but I did leave it plugged in for quite a while. So, let's see if the battery took a charge. There we go. Oh, my God. It did. <laughs> it indeed did take a charge. It may not be for very long, but it is running on its own battery. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, so we got a we got a clock battery problem there. That's no big deal. I'll just make a new battery for it. Although. The next one I put in, I'm going to actually buy one that has the lead soldered or tack welded to it. I should, you know what, I should probably invest in a little battery tack welding machine. I mean, I make enough batteries. Why not do it, right? Oh, oh no, nope, it's running. It is running off its own battery. I cannot believe it. Can you believe it? I can't. Here's the plug. So battery shows up as being full. We are running off the original battery, my friends. So 
it goes without saying that this is a lithium, or I'm sorry, a, um, yeah, this is a lithium ion pack. Lithium ion packs definitely have a longer shelf life than nickel metal hydride, and obviously, of course, NICAD. Um, let's take a look at the uh, power properties here. Oh, it's not showing me the battery details. Or will it? What do I have to do to make it do that? Here we go. Total time remaining an hour and a half, although I don't... It won't last that long. I, it's going to drop suddenly, and it already has started dropping a bit. So, um... But, I mean... Maybe not. What are we at? 98%? 98% remaining. Let's go on the World Wide Web. And see what happens. Okay, we'll not go to hp.com. Obviously, old browser problems and all that. Let's try to find, let's see, best browser. Oh, you can't search in, um, yeah. Google.com. Let's see, best browser for Windows XP. Almost put 98. Windows 98. Otter browser, Firefox version 52 Google Chrome version you can't get Chrome on this um, let's see let's see if this site loads Windows XP Low battery. Okay. So, all right. Well, that's that was... It. I expected that. But don't worry. All right. Let's see what we got. I'm trying to see if there's any that I remember. Google Chrome. Firefox. K. Million. Of course, I don't have 7-Zip installed. Yeah. So the battery is definitely trash, um, but it, it, you know, it looked promising at first. It did at least keep the machine running for a good five minutes or so. Yeah, so that's cool. My Pal, New Moon, Arctic Fox, Pale Moon. I think I've heard of those two. Otter browser? Yeah, these won't load. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to download whatever browser I find, I'm gonna have to and I'm sure folks at home, you folks, you, you uh, will recommend something for me. Um that usually you guys are really good about doing that. Um because I haven't run an XP machine in years, so um I'm not up to speed on what browsers work in the modern era. But I am sure you, my loyal viewers, are going to provide some guidance on that, and I appreciate that. Really do. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much going to end our video. I um, I did not install The Sims because I didn't have the inst. All right, if if you happen to find a copy of this on the web, this is The Sims. Um, what do they call it? Sims Ultimate Edition. Uh, or whatever they call it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you happen to find a copy of this, it comes in three files, and you've got to you've got to copy all three files or or disk images into the same folder, and run it from there. Because if you put the next disk in, it doesn't see it. It's kind of weird. Um, so you want to put all the disk pack files in the same folder and then run the installer and you should be able to it should work from there um, but it works this is a this is every sims first edition um, expansion pack 
and every, everything you can get in The Sims is on these discs for the first edition. That's all the expansion packs and additional fun tools and stuff. Um, I forget what the hell it was called, though. It, it'll say that, I think it said that on the installer. Um, it was like The Sims. It's not an official release. It is a very hacked release. It doesn't work the first, it doesn't always work well. I've found that on Windows 98 machines, it can be a little bit dodgy sometimes, but when it works, it works great. Um, which is pretty much, you know, the original Sims installers and uh, software were pretty dodgy, even, you know, even in their basic form, so. Um, anyway, that's gonna conclude our video. Thank you for watching. Revisiting the Compaq NC8230 which is really an HP, which is an identity crisis laptop. Um, anyway. All right, it's called The Sims 8-in-1, and I just finished installing it, so let's see how it goes. And again, you run it without the CD. Um, cancel that. Yeah, you're going to get that error message, and... It's actually not an issue. You know, even running this game on the best hardware money can buy, it still takes forever to load. I found that to be the case. I've run this game on um, Pentium 3600, and it runs okay. Probably runs better on a Pentium 4 for sure, um, or equivalent. But uh, anything beyond that, it doesn't matter. It still, you know, takes forever. There it goes. And here we are. Look at that. It works. It works. Anyway. Yes, I'm going to quit. But this is the Sims 8 in 1. Um, you know, if you can find it, it's definitely worth, uh, worth downloading because uh, it, it is the full original Sims, which is the best Sims, in my opinion. Um, because it, it just the, the interface and the layout I, and the grid lines, I, I don't know. It's, uh, if, if you're just looking to have fun designing houses, that's the one you want. I, I find it to be the most, uh, the most uh, easy to use. And did it put it in the start menu? It sure did. Yeah, there it is. But it's not an official uh, <laughs> approved hack, but it works. And that's all that matters. Well, that concludes our video, and uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.